This is called, I was born to small fish, from a mistranslated line by Pablo Neruda. <laughs> they fill the stream with dashes, clopped in dark collections by the bank. A clutch of minnows sprayed into life like torpedoes from a pregnant submarine. And I am born unto them, child of the sardine, goldfish, pollywog, whatever can swim in a thimble, dodge change flipped into a fountain for luck. I'm not the son of the marlin, the sturgeon, the sunfish around whom jellyfish revolve like small planets. The tiniest of fish is sufficient to be my mother. I'm from this line of stream swimmers, gulf swimmers, fish at the mercy of eddies and wakes, schooling together and bursting apart. Confusion and numbers are only defense. This line, this arc, hundreds flashing through a shaft of light. I call them family and comrades. Call them my fish, small fish, birthright. Read one from the little uh, pamphlet called The Silence Teacher. And this will be the last fish poem. I promise. Do you know what koi are? Type of carp. They look like, yeah, like giant goldfish. Yeah? Uh, Japanese, yeah, so often in Zen gardens, which is where this is set. If expensive, too. It says Koi Pond in Memoriam KJ. I went to pay a visit to the Koi to see what they thought of my life and how I had been living it. Beneath the imperturbable surface, they mouthed the words, saying bleb and bleb and bleb. <laughs> Some torpedoed, others swung a lazy fin like an oarsman turning a casual arc. Some lay like unexploded mines, chin up. I became so outwardly still, the black cat crossing the painted red bridge failed to notice me, and the turtle drifted shoreward like a sail with six points. Of course, my son, who lived too briefly for my liking, was there with me as well and my pocket notebook held against my hip, many small laments, carefully arranged. A friend of mine is writing about his melanoma, having reached bemused indifference that he could go at any time, hoping for more life and smiling like a child at his future. What is the future, Koi, who sip the rare pond surface and descend? You are here to teach me something, I am sure, just like the tumors and the dark organs blooming. And when our pediatrician bowed his head, that man of science became ordained a priest of human religion. What was his prayer again? The water going dark only makes the orange seem brighter as you race and kiss and spar for food pretending not to notice me. For this gift of your indifference, I am grateful. I will sit until the pond goes black, the last orange spark extinguished. So on a lighter note, I think, I, my wife and I were having an argument. She was saying, you know, even your funny poems are dark. And I was saying, no, 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 even my dark poems are funny. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what I do. A hand that snaps the twig from the branch is my hand, not tending or pruning, but pausing while walking to grab and grasp and strain the bough thoughtlessly as I pass. I regard the minor damage undaunted. Some juniper berries shook free and crushed to a fibrous pulp. And I do not demur to question why my curling hand would hoard up leaves if it could all along the short path home grabbing sticks to smack the fence post slats and picking the tight buds of neighbor's roses. Unrepentant, my five fingers, the whole city council, judge, jury, and executioner, my thumb elected mayor, nay governor, 
may mark of the wax-leaf picturesqueness, the possessive pride and hard-pew reverence of well-kept suburbs, sleepy hamlets, the cow that knows the grass belongs in its chambers of her stomach, the goat that nibbles tweed and rush and tarpaulin, the gentle, absent-minded anarchy of plucking at the neighborhood like fur for fleas, like cotton for seeds, picking and picking the whole damn place apart.